Hi, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to provide you with another update on the situation in Turkey. And in this video, we're going to talk about exports because the Turkish government have introduced a new policy whereby all of their exporters are required to hand over 25% of their foreign currency reserves to the government because the government is running short of Forex, as we mentioned in one of the other videos. And the government wants that Forex because it needs to keep supporting the lira in the currency market. So it's been following a strategy of entering the markets and buying lira using its own foreign currency reserves in an attempt to keep the lira price up. Uh, that hasn't been working, unfortunately, but they want to have those reserves just in case. So they've now made this announcement that all of their exporters have to hand over 25% of their cash. And that is going to have a really negative impact on all of those companies. So I wanted to go through this in a bit more detail in this video. We'll have a look at what's been happening with Turkey's exports. It's actually the best part of their economy. One of the benefits, probably the only benefit of your currency devaluing is that all of your goods become much cheaper to overseas buyers. So if you look at the example in the US, the exchange rate between the lira and the dollar 12 months ago was around about 7 to 1. And today it's around about 14 to 1. So it's halved in terms of the value. So that means if you were buying something for 14 lira a year ago, it would have cost you $2.00. If you're buying the same item today and it's the same price, it would only cost you $1. So that shows why exports are more attractive to overseas buyers when your currency goes down in value. So the export side of things is the only positive that's come out of all of this. And exports at the end of 2021 were at a record level for Turkey. So in this video, I'll quickly run through what's happened with the exchange rate recently because I think there's a bit of confusion. People are believing that the exchange rate's getting better now. We're talking about daily analysis. So on some days, it's moving very slightly, but the overall picture is really bad news for Turkey. So I'll just do a recap on what's happening right now with the exchange rate and what's happened over the last 12 months. We'll touch briefly on inflation because Turkey has now gone into the top 10 countries in the world with the highest inflation. I'll provide more detail on the exports how big this market is for Turkey and which industries are really important to Turkey. And that's important because you then have to look at where the raw materials and the goods for that industry are coming from. And that's one of the problems we've got here is that Turkey are having to import a lot of the raw materials and unfinished goods before they then can export them back out. I'll then provide you with the details of this government order that has been issued to all of the exporters and then a look at the implications and finally summarise my view and opinion as to what is going on right now and how this is likely to play out over the next three to six months. So before we get into all of that, if I could ask you at some point during this video to give me a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed already, then I'd encourage you to do so because I'm posting a lot of videos about Turkey and China and lots of different economies around the world that are having an influence on the global economy. And I'm also trying to give you a regular update on business and finance news just to make sure that you're in the know and you understand what's going on. And finally, I just point out that this video has been split into chapters so you can pick and choose which sections that you want to watch. OK, so if we have a look at this chart. It shows the movement of the Turkish lira against the US dollar over the last 12 months. So we can see that a year ago we were looking at around about eight lira to the dollar. And that level stayed at a relatively flat level all the way through until October 2021. And then we started to see a huge deterioration in the value of the lira. And we got to the highest point, which was over 16.5 lira to $1 on the 20th of December. And since that time, we have seen the rate move around, but it's still trading at an extremely high level. So if we look 
at this chart, which shows the movement over the last month. So you can see a sharp increase up to the 20th of December. So then we saw the rate whipsaw back down, but it only went down to around about 11 to the dollar. And then we've come back to the rate that we're at currently, which is around about 14 lira to the dollar. So when you look at the overall picture of what's happened over the last 12 months, we have seen the lira halve in value. It is now worth 50% what it was worth 12 months ago. And that means that everything is doubly expensive when you're buying things on an import basis from Turkey's perspective. The benefit, as I mentioned earlier in this video, is that your exports are now half the price they were 12 months ago. I'll just touch briefly on inflation because I've covered it in more detail on other videos. But the rate of inflation in December hit a 19 year high in Turkey of 36.1%, which is the highest rate that it's been since President Erdogan took over running the country. And when you look at the detail of how the rate got to that level, consumer prices in December actually increased 13.58%, which on an annualized basis would equate to 162% inflation. So we can see that prices are currently out of control in Turkey. And this is directly linked to what's happening on the exchange rate side of things. But the two go hand in hand. And one of the problems that we've now got is that the government is following a contrarian view. So they're doing the opposite to what general economic theory tells you to do at times of high inflation. So normally you would expect interest rates to be increased to reduce everybody's spending and to bring demand down and therefore bring prices back down. But actually what they're doing in Turkey is lowering the rates of interest. So that is causing a lot of confusion. And we've now got a situation where everything is moving around wildly and we don't really know what's going on with these figures because they are so high. So Turkey is now officially ranked as the eighth highest country in the world in terms of inflation. So Turkey is now very much in an emergency state with regards to the movement of its prices and its inflation levels. So as I mentioned earlier in this video, one of the only benefits of your currency becoming less and less valuable is that it makes your exports much cheaper. And 2021 was a record year for Turkey. And they actually hit $225 billion of exports, which is the largest that the country has ever achieved. And the three biggest individual sectors for Turkish exports are the automotive industry, which equated to $29 billion in 2021, chemicals, which was $25 billion, and steel, which was $22 billion. But as I've mentioned before on these videos, Turkey does not have a lot of natural resources. So it has to import raw materials to be able to process them before it can then export them. So it's relatively cheap in terms of its labor and it wanted to attract a lot of overseas investment over the last 20 or 30 years. So companies have been opening up factories and sites all across Turkey over the last couple of decades to be able to benefit from subsidies and also cheap labor. So the problem that Turkey now has is it's having to use its foreign currency to buy the imports to be able to process those goods and materials before they can achieve the exports. So you do have a high dependency on buying currency as well as receiving payments for the sale of exports. If we have a look at this table, it shows the level of imports and the level of exports for Turkey for the month of December. And you can see that the imports were $26.9 billion and the exports were $21.5 billion. So imports were over $5 billion higher than exports. So that is a big problem for Turkey. If they were able to produce all of the raw materials themselves, then there would be an overall benefit to a reduction of their lira valuation. But because they're having to buy in all of the raw materials and the goods before they process them, they're actually running at a net loss in terms of imports versus exports. And that's quite important when we go on to talk about this new government policy, whereby the Turkish government want all exporters to hand over 25%
of all of their foreign currency reserves. So on Monday the 3rd of January, the central bank requested all exporters to sell 25% of their foreign currency reserves directly to the bank in exchange for lira. Now, the bank subsequently held a meeting with all of those exporters, and it was expected that they would be offered some form of guarantee scheme. So recently, the government introduced a deposit protection scheme, whereby everybody who holds deposits in Turkish banks will have protection in the event that there is a deterioration of the lira, the government will make good that difference. And this is what all of the exporters thought was going to be offered to them. But no such scheme was offered. Basically, they were told that the lira has now stabilised, the government has sorted out the problem, and there won't be a problem going forward. So therefore, you should be happy with your lira exposure rather than your foreign currency exposure. Now, that's just simply too risky for any of these companies to be able to take a view on. Because when you look at what's happened to the value of the lira, it is tanking. And it's likely if the current economic policies continue that it will continue to go down. So these exporters are taking a massive commercial risk if they decide to hand over this foreign currency and take a gamble on lira. And there's a really interesting quote from the chairman of the Textile Exporters and Employees Association in Turkey, who stated that Turkish currency makes up only 18% of the expenses in that sector. So 82% of all of their costs are actually in foreign currency. So that means they're buying in all of these raw materials and all of these products, and it's costing them 82% of their total costs. So they simply can't afford to hand over 25% because they would essentially have to then reduce the amount of business that they're doing. And the other point that the chairman has made is that the profit margins in this sector are only around about 7 to 8%. So it's impossible for these guys to be able to take a view in terms of exchange rate costs because their margins are already super thin. And this issue doesn't simply apply to textiles industry. It applies to the whole of Turkey because they're so reliant upon importing all of the raw materials. Therefore, they need to have high amounts of foreign currency to be able to make those payments and protect themselves from the movements in the exchange rates. So the government asking them to do this is really going to affect their commercial position. So what's the summary and conclusion here? Well, as we've run through in this video, the exchange rate for the lira has deteriorated significantly over the last 12 months and is likely to continue deteriorating as we move through into 2022. Inflation is now out of control and the general market consensus is that it's going to remain at at least 40% through the whole of this year. It could actually get a lot worse than that. And if it stays at those levels, then the lira will continue to devalue. And that is bad news for the exporters because they're having to buy so much in the foreign markets to be able to process it before they can export. So they need to hang on to all of their foreign currency reserves just to maintain their current position. Now, the government coming out and making this announcement that everybody has to hand over 25% of their reserves is basically going to reduce the amount of business that all of these exporters can get involved with because they won't be able to buy the same level of goods and therefore they will have a reducing order book. And that is going to be counterproductive for Turkey. So this is a disastrous policy. It's a crazy idea. It's being driven by political reasons. The reason Turkey is asking all of these guys to hand over their money isn't because they're wanting to support the exporters and increase their business. They need that money to be able to go and support the lira in the foreign currency markets. And that is going to be a complete waste of time as well, because we've seen what happened recently when they followed that policy and it didn't work. The lira devalued even more. So they will just burn through this cash. It won't save the lira because it's all linked to what's happening in the economy. So this is a short term measure, a very, very short term gain for the Turkish government, which is going to impact on all of these businesses who are involved in export. This is the shining light of the Turkish economy right now. It's the only part that's doing well. And by taking 25% of their cash away from them, 
it's going to mean that these guys are going to do less business. So this is a disastrous move and it's going to make things worse. So I'll keep you posted on all moves and developments and any further news. I wanted to just give you a bit more detail on this story and provide you with a bit more colour as to why this is really bad news for Turkey. Hopefully you found it useful and interesting and informative. If you have, then please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already.